Hey everybody, welcome to a brief rundown on the White Ghost Dancing doc that I have on my website, clarissacustommusic.com.au. That's K L E R R I S A, custommusic.com.au. If you are interested in obtaining a copy of this document, it is free, so please, by all means, jump on the website. You'll need to go to the um, link which you'll find in the access area to uh, the VIP section. Um, you'll need to fill out your email address, offer that up, and then from there you'll be able to get the document in question. Now, White Ghost Dancing is a work by Ross Edwards. Now, I don't have a copy of the score. You'll need to purchase that from the Australian Music Centre and you'll need to purchase a copy of the recording from the Australian Music Centre. But I have done some background analysis on it for you, so this will help you to actually connect this with the score and the recording. So White Ghost Dancing was commissioned by Sydney Symphony Orchestra um, Symphony Australia with the financial assistance of the Australia Council for the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra and its conductor David Porchlin, I think it is, uh, to whom it's dedicated and it was first performed in 2000. Uh, so for those that are studying HSC Music 2 in New South Wales it is still within the acceptable last 25 years so it is a piece of music you could study or your students could study. Now, on the document in question, White Ghost Dancing, I've actually gone through and done a whole range of things for you. Compositional devices, so I go through um, the what I found to be the 11 ways that the material is manipulated. For those, again, who are in Music 2 HSC, this is a, a great way of analysing a work for your students. Um, the term White Ghost refers to the European settlers in Australia. The Aboriginal people believe them, um, due to the light colour of their skin, to be ghosts of their ancestors. And uh, Ross actually wrote, as I compose white ghost dancing, the concept of a white ghost came to symbolise non-Indigenous Australia's innate Aboriginality, its capacity to transform and heal itself through spiritual connectedness with the earth. I believe that music, which has enormous therapeutic properties and for me a close relationship with ritual and especially dance, is destined to make an important contribution to the transformation of healing, transformation and healing, hence the title. Um, so he then goes on to talk about a few other things. One of the big things about Edwards's writing is he's very heavy in the motivic cell cellular development. So he has short re repeated motifs and melodic motifs. He has patterns and textures that represent insect sounds. He has abrupt starts and stops as asymmetrical phrase structures. He's got unexpected metric changes. There's fragments of bird songs and frog songs in this work. Um, there's also static harmonic movement and prolonged chords. It's one of his bases of his compositional style. Uh, he has sections of dance-like rhythms, which of course comes back to his Menina period, uh, which contrasts with slow contemplative sections reminiscent of his sacred period. So you can see here on the left-hand side, I've written a list of all of the things that you will find used in Edwards's piece, Repetition and Imitation, Motivic Development and Extension, all right, as opposed to, say, um, Interpolation or Addition Subtraction. Extension being where the motif is stated exactly as it stands and then there's more stuff on the end. All right, remember that. There's rhythmic changes, there's register changes, he changes instrument combinations, thus altering the tone colour. He has articulation changes, he fragments things, he's got metric changes, he uses rests quite effectively. Antiphony, which for those that don't know is call and response, drones or pedal points, he has organum and chants reminiscent of the medieval period, ostinati of course and heavy use of secundal harmony. Now you might not know what that is. So moving on to section two, I'll come back to secundal harmony. Here are the motifs that I have identified as the top five that he uses. Now again for those that are studying HSC Music 2, this is a great way to um, look at your major works and how to remember your material work out what your core material is and then how it's developed from there. So Ross Edwards has a couple of repeated themes or motifs um, and I've actually written a little bit later where you find them. There's this GA motif. It's just two notes. The idea has changed rhythmically. He's used it as a cacciaturas. He's used it as semiquavers. He's used it as quavers. He's used it as dotted figures. And you can see here that the bassoon has it in bar one. Uh, and then it's in bar 8 as semiquavers, and then it's in bar 14 as quavers, and then bar 16 with clarinet has it in a repeated pattern, and then it's used as an akachitura with uh, bar 18 by the look of it in the clarinets, 
Then the bassoons have it in bar 20 as a different type of a cacciatura and the trumpets have it in bar 2, I think that says, um, as in a cacciatura with some articulation changes. So you can see how I've gone through and found that motif and all the different ways that particular motif has been altered. There's an extension of the motif using the octave split. That's for that developed in the brass. So you can see here's the AG and there's the extension, how it's added on the end of the motif. And it develops to BC in the trumpets. That's a brass motif that happens around 45 to 78. So bar 45, you'll find that trumpet motif. Okay, he uses secundal harmony, ostinati, chant motifs and drones. So for those that don't know what secundal harmony is, it's harmony in seconds. With a motif GA, obviously you're going to be looking at secundal harmony. Um, and he uses it what we call linearly and vertically. Okay, it's very important. So obviously linearly, so just to, actually, no, I'll go here. So linearly and vertically, okay. Obviously linearly with a GA motif, he has chords or intervals like in the horns, bar 1 and the harp bar 18. Um, inverted linearly, the bassoons going from the B flat down to the A. So we've inverted it. And then monolically in bar 53, he opens it with a second. There's combinations too from bar 103. You'll find an introduction to the F sharp G pattern in horns as quavers used as grace notes in the strings and then later in trumpets. He's used it in organum in 104 with the strings and oboe. The xylophone plays a chord version for 106. So bar 171, there's a combination. Viola has intervals of a second against cello and violin two, which has linear movement. Augmentation of the linear movement in viola using crotchets, ascending and descending, which is extended in the organum chain in 75 in the strings. There's antiphony or call and response between horn and flute and harp, um, alternating ascending, descending patterns using seconds. And then there's changes of time signature to, uh, in state to destabilize the pulse. In 259, Antiphony again in the trumpets, one playing C and D as two quavers and the other one playing a grace note version. So that's really interesting. So when you get to the score and you have a look at the score, you can find all of those things in there of how that motif's been used. Ostinatos and drones, and this is very common. Uh, for example, bar one, there's a moving pedal point with bassoon stayed on A, sustained on A, and the horns have got the quavers in seconds. Bar 14, the timpani's got a pedal point with quavers and a quaver rest. 45, the vibraphone plays it, reminiscent of the timpani part in 14. Bar 45, you'll also find trombone pedal on E with some rhythmic changes. And then 274, the drones are in the bassoons, timpani and lower strings. And then continue up into the bass clarinet movement of seconds. So heavy use of ostinatos and drones. And then there's a chant. Now, Edwards used the chant, plain chant, the dia zero in this work. However, it's not used completely as a whole chant. He's only used a section of it, which, of course, I have bracketed. He takes um, he uses it melodically and contrapuntally. So this here is sort of your chant that he uses, the part of it that he uses. And you do tend to see this bit here used a, a fair bit. Okay, begins in 103, that's where you'll find the chant. Um, there's articulation changes and instrument changes in 114.15. At 175, he uses strings to use crotches instead of quavers. Um, bar 181, flutes using syncopation, with the same uh, chant. And in bar set 270, there's a cannon in the strings with the chant. So you can see I've gone, here's the chant, and here's the different places that it's used and what it's done. Okay, how it's been changed. So that's just the five sections of the document. As I said, you can get access to this particular one at clarissacustommusic.com.au. So please jump on and grab your copy. Um, and of course, don't forget if you do, uh, if you are impressed with this particular work, then uh, shoot me a, a comment or uh, stick a comment on Facebook or jump on our Facebook page or maybe uh, send me an email to let me know, you know, if this has been useful or helpful. There's been a lot of people asking for this sort of content. Um, so hopefully with a little bit of luck this will help you uh, with White Ghost Dancing, anyone out there who's looking at doing it for years 9, 10, 11 or 12.